Hi everybody. The other day I noticed that my Pro95 scanner was distorted and I wasn't sure what was going on but um, I tried tuning the weather channel up and down a little bit off frequency and it seemed to have shifted its uh, tuning um, around 5 or 10k off where it should be and my normal local weather channel is 162 450 and if you listen to it right now you'll see that it's distorted Now if I tune it up and down uh, a little bit you'll see that it comes in clear so that's what tells me that it's off frequency so let me do that for you just to demonstrate what, I'm, what I mean. So around about there, Near steady temperature in the mid it's coming in fairly clear, but on the correct frequency 162.450, it's distorted. So if we go back to the, the, the correct frequency, which is there, and listen to that, you'll see it's distorted. So basically, basically it's off frequency, and this scanner runs 24 hours a day, uh, so it's it's had quite a bit of use, and <clears throat> I guess over time the the oscillator on here has drifted a little bit, and it needs realigning. Um, so I'm going to have a look, see uh, see what I can see what I can see. I'm going to take it apart to uh, to get it apart. It's just uh, very easy. There's just four screws in the back uh, that I will take out, and I'll show you that. <clears throat> so here's the four screws in the back here. I'm just going to undo those and pop the back off. So I've done undone the four screws here, so uh, this should slide off pretty easily now. And there we go. We're in. And I believe from what I've read online that there's an adjustment inside this can here that will correct the problem so I guess there's a an oscillator in here that uh, that drifts over time so I'm going to pop the cover off this and see what uh, see what's going on in there so that was fairly easy just uh, the, the cover just on clips so I've removed the cover. Now, from what I understand, this is a trimmer capacitor here that will adjust the oscillator and bring it back on frequency. So, I notice there's a crystal here and a couple of capacitors. And there's, there's some brown 
there's some brown um, substance. I don't think it's a leaked capacitor. But then again, it's difficult to say for sure, but um, if it is, then that's not good. And I can understand if that has leaked, then I need to uh, clean that off. But it, to me, it looks like they've put some sort of compound on those capacitors to stop them moving. Now, <laughs> it looks like rust and I'm inclined to take those capacitors out of there and double check what's going on but initially I'm just going to try just in that uh, trimmer cap I think it's labeled T what is it labeled TC1 no, trimming cap 1 and it's a capacitor it's not a resistor and so I'm going to try adjusting that and see if that solves the problem. <clears throat> Well, let's see if I can do this uh, around the around the camera. Okay, that seems to have uh, corrected the problem. Alright, that seems to have solved the problem. So, that little trimmer cap down there, TC1, just needed a quarter of a turn and it brought it back on frequency so let me uh, just reassemble everything and give it another test just one other point um, I used a non-inductive screwdriver to adjust that capacitor because if you use a metal screwdriver the chances are the metal screwdriver is going to affect the adjustment so I've used this non-metallic uh, ceramic screwdriver to adjust the pot down there and uh, that way the screwdriver itself isn't going to adjust or isn't going to affect the, uh, the tuning. Right, that seems to have uh, stayed okay. I've put the uh, cover for the can back on and everything seems to be uh, on frequency still. I wasn't sure if that would affect the tuning at all. Seems to be working fine, so, uh, so that's good. So all that remains now is for me to put the cover back on, uh, put the case back together and uh, give it another test just want to give you guys a, a tip um, when you're putting self-tapping screws into plastic it's always a good idea to turn it back 
uh, in my own shadow here but you turn it backwards until you hear that click so I'll do it again once you hear that click then you can screw it in the correct direction to uh, tighten it up and you know that you're not going to cross thread so let's do it again with uh, this one again I'm in my own shadow so turn it back and you hear the click and then you can screw it into place but that just means that when you hear that click the screw has found the thread that's already cut into the plastic and you're not going to cross thread anything highs around 40 lows in the mid 20s monday partly sunny a chance of snow showers in the morning then a chance of rain showers in the afternoon so everything seems to be working fine now um i'm going to demonstrate what was happening before with the tuning it up and down a little the correct frequency is 162 450 uh, fm narrow fm and so i'm just going to demonstrate if i tune that off frequency now it should start to go distorted and the relative humidity 72 percent the wind was northwest at seven miles an hour producing a wind chill of so 162 460 we're now distorted again which is what was happening when it was on frequency if we come back the other way the wind was west at six miles an hour so i can tune one sixty two four four five and it's fairly clear with a temperature of thirty six at Springfield, Massachusetts. That's the correct frequency and it's nice and clear now. At Albany, it was partly cloudy and that's five of thirty three five kilohertz high. It was cloudy with a temperature of thirty and it's still fairly clear. Looking as soon as I go above that it was so that's ten K off frequency and it's distorted. So if I go the other way and if I go 10k down, it's distorted. So it looks like it's fixed. Um, I did find the I did find information online about the problem, and that was the recommended fix. Uh, I need to do some other tests on other frequencies to make sure everything's uh, functioning properly but this was the initial test that I did um, and found that it was around 5 to 10k off frequency and that little adjustment there seems to have fixed the problem so anyway thanks for watching this was the uh, well it was sold as, as a Radio Shack scanner the uh, Pro 95 um, it, it's probably manufactured by another company I don't think Radio Shack actually manufactured it uh, the model number there is well, catalogue number is uh, 20-525 that's the Pro 95 Radio Shack Pro 95 scanning receiver so anyway, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and um, stay tuned for more videos. Thanks again. Bye for now.